Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me for another watercolor painting. I'm Joe Menza and in this one here we're going to do a nice wooded scene. I've already sprayed some water on and now I'm evening out my initial coating of water to get the nice sheen on the paper. And now I'm coming in with sort of a combination of cad yellow hue and yellow ochre. So what we're doing is we're laying in the background for uh, our kind of forestry scene here. We're laying it in, we, we wanna make a background and going with the brightest colors first. So the cad yellow hue, yellow ochre, um, just to create some different dimensions of, of yellows in the back. So a lot of this you won't really see, but it's just to create our little bit of background. Now, very important for the light that's going to be coming through the woods to leave that sort of centerpiece open. That's something that you're going to want to make sure that you do. Um, I'm laying in what's left on my brush on the bottom, and uh, we're going to leave a little bit of light so we have some light striking, of course, on the bottom of the paper. So... This is a 90 pound paper, by the way. If you notice, it's buckling a little bit. See, I do have that issue. Um, people are like, don't your paper buckle? Yeah, it does buckle a little bit. Doesn't really bother me though. I mean, um, you can just reclip it if you want to. I mean, I usually just keep going. I'm not uh, that fussy about it. But um, so, let's see here now. So now we're gonna start coming in with some of the darker shades. Right over the top, we've dipped into a little bit of blue. See now, so you got those transparent sort of colors and you're going over the top of the, of the, uh, of the yellow and now you start getting some greens in there. This one's gonna require a little bit of layering because we want a depth, we wanna look like we're in the woods here. So it's gonna require a little bit of depth um, it's not just going to be your straightforward, you know, one type of, uh, how should I say, one, one color, two colors. Um, and now what's important is to take a brush. Um, I like using the rigger for this. I have this long-handled brush here that I got. I don't know if it qualifies as a rigger. It's just a pointy brush. It's got a long handle on it. You know, I don't know what it is about long-handled brushes. They make me feel more like I'm an artist. <laughs> is it? Is that funny or what? It's like I feel like I'm back from the from the from the paper and the canvas and I'm just I don't know. I feel a kinship with the artist of the past. But anyways, we've got the burnt umber going in Payne's gray. Now if you do some varying colors of these tree trunks, like grays, browns, they'll look like they're different depths. And you gotta do it when the paper's still wet so that they diffuse. And if they don't, look at what I'm doing here. I'm just going to take my brush that's pretty dry. I'm just kind of blending that into the background. Be careful because you can mess this up. This is light touch. So you can blend a little bit of that into the background. If it didn't get quite the effect that you were looking for, then you can start to blend that in. So it looks like a bunch of lines. It looks like a zebra or something right now. But uh, eventually it will make sense. It will come to fruition. And uh, <clears throat> I've been watching, I've been watching the comments on my last video. I was asking if people like to see the painting before, or they like to be surprised. And just as I suspected, people gave different answers. Some good answers. One person said that they like to see the painting because then they can decide if they want to watch the video. And actually, that's true because. I've gone on YouTube and you see people painting and it's like, if that painting isn't your style, it could be a, it, it, it could be a princess and a mushroom patch or something. And like, I don't, it's, I'm not interested in that. It's great, it could be the greatest painting ever. But um, I'm just not, uh, that's not what I wanna paint. Um, but if you're looking for landscape paintings, I typically try to say, I mean, it should say landscape probably as a, as a it should say something about landscape right off the bat. This way you know what you're dealing with. So maybe maybe the title really needs to say landscape painting. Um, 
And then when people come across your, they're looking for watercolor, then they see, okay, this is this is what I this is what I do, because watercolor could be flowers, it could be portrait, it could be anything. All right, a little burnt umber here. I'm just kind of flailing, throwing some paint at the paper here, and it's going to serve the purpose of some shrubbery, some low lying foliage. Um, but at some point here, we're going to need to put in some trees and things over the top. We'll go with like maybe a nice pine tree and see where we wind up here. Dip in with my, I really, I told you this before, like using a, I like using a fan brush. I don't know, it lends itself to pine trees for whatever reason, but um, I think it's just the shape of it. Ultramarine blue, a yellow shade of some kind you can use. Some cad yellow, and if you highlight it a little while it's still wet, it'll make a nice little blending. It's weird, uh, last couple days here, because where I am, in the Midwest, it snowed. I woke up in the morning and I, I couldn't believe it. It was like January, December all over again. And we didn't even get any snow for Christmas, so I don't know. Maybe we need to move, maybe we need to move our holidays around. Now I'm taking, I just did that brush because I wanted things to dry a little bit. I've started off that little pine, but I'm now I'm taking a finer rigger. I like the number three. And I'm just kind of haphazardly making branches around, squiggled around. And these, a lot of these are going to be hidden by, by leaves. So I'm not really that concerned. I mean, if some show up in the end, then that's all good. So do you see, maybe we got something coming together. It's starting to make even more sense. Now we're going back to the hockey brush. Now we're going to start putting in some dark foreground trees. And when you do this, now it starts to push back all those lines and squiggles that we had going on. And everybody's favorite trick, the card. So let me cover this scraping thing. This seems to be, I don't know, it, it, the scraping knee seems to be something people are having difficulty with and i really want to help you with your scraping because i know everybody enjoys it everybody's mesmerized by it so pressure you don't want to push real hard because you're going to scratch your paper so your card should not bend if it's bending when you scrape with it then it's you're putting too much pressure so you got to experiment on some different pressures and you have to realize that different papers are going to have different results. Okay. And the amount of paint that you put on is going to make a difference too. Now, when you scrape, by the way, I'm putting some leaves on with my roughed up, my roughed up hockey brush the bristles being separated make for some nice leaves and we're going dark in the end we want that light to stand out that's that's the whole key to this thing now so when you scrape you're going to be kind of enough to like push the paint away and it might even start going down and that's fine but if your paint the lighter your paint the less effect it's going to have the darker the paint the more effect you're going to have. So you don't, you want to use a heavier paint and you need to try, like don't necessarily do it immediately, but like let it sit for a second, come back while it's still wet. And that will change your results of the scraping too. So those are some different variables of the scraping. Paper makes a difference, all that kind of stuff. 
So just keep practicing with that. And then the final thing is, and my thing is, and I don't see people doing this. I've seen your work. We have a big group, Ron Ranson, on Facebook. And the people that are scraping are missing out on one key thing. They don't come back with paint on their brush and put it underneath where they scraped on the rocks and go over the scraping one more time to make the scraped part look brighter. And that's, that's where you're not... I've looked at a lot of your work and that's what you're missing. So do that too. That's another factor. So now with these trees I've put in, closer branches, okay? Closer uh, branches with the rigger brush. Now we've got some forestry things happen. Now look at the background. See how it's faded into the paper? So it's faded in the back there. You could tell there's now there's getting a glow in the in the back. Okay. Now I'm just gonna I'm gonna put some trees on this side. I'm trying to make them look random. I'm trying to make them look natural. more sticks if you go too crazy and fill this up then you won't have any yellow back from the background you'll have a big blob a few more branches with the rigor brush Yeah, like scraping is the like number one question and it's like one of the biggest videos I have is people asking about scraping and that scraping video that has all those views that's one of my older ones I think I've actually improved on my scraping since even then so just keep watching keep practicing I'll tell you what if you use Canson XL and you use Fabriano Studio you will get two different results for scraping. You will have two different rocks when you scrape when you scrape for rocks. You will have two different results. Now look at I'm going to put in more leaves and I'm going to go over the top part. I'm going over the top part of where the light comes in. I left that purposely so now I can leave little areas of light showing through and just enough leaves into the lit area to create a little bit of counter change to extend that and we are now doing more leaves this is again a shade of green pretty much um, yellows ultramarine blue burnt umber really isn't much more colors used in this. You can call it a limited palette if you want. Now, this is still wet. I can come back and I can do my scraping. If you put a lot of paint on there, you can probably wait three, four, five minutes before you even come back to do scraping. So, if you do it right away, you'll have paint dripping down off the end of your card. So, there's a couple different ways you can go at it. So I'm just impatient sometimes and I start scraping. But uh, I've done it enough times. So if you're doing it and you want to try one minute, two minutes, three minutes, and just see what the results are. I don't care if you take a piece of, like, scrap paper. You want to take a piece of scrap paper and do that? That's probably not a bad idea. So we're going to start working on more of this tree here. Not really thrilled with it. Um, I don't know. I just wanted something over to the left to kind of differentiate from everything else. I could have just made straight trees. If you're watching this through for the first time, you don't have to make... I mean, you can make more trees if you want to. I just thought it would be nice to have a little bit of a tree there. So, if you go back through this, you could say, well, I'm not going to put a pine tree in there. You know, when you see somebody doing a painting, start to envision things in your mind to change up. Like, you want to follow along, but at the same time, like, 
put your tree in a different spot or do something to make it different from the one that you have there already. Coming back with a little more of the fan brush. Now, look at how the light is closing in on, on that center back there. So it really looks like you're going down into like light at the end of the tunnel type thing. And to further that, I'm taking my fan brush and I'm making foliage a little bit on an angle so it pulls you down into that light. And if you know me from watching my videos, light is pretty much everything. Okay, we're getting close to the end here. And as you see, I can kind of, if I encroach too far into this little pathway here, I can kind of dab it out a little bit if you're not happy with something. Uh, always keep a little tissue handy. You can always dab things out, spray them with your spray bottle. So just, just tapping in a few more leaves. Kind of want to push things down into that light. And of course I'm still going to fuss around with this tree here. Happens to all of us. We keep looking at something and want a different effect. There's always going to be something in your painting that you'll wish you had done different or uh, maybe didn't quite have the effect that you were looking for. So I've wiped a little bit back out again. I'm just going to dab in a little, trying to get a little dimension out of this tree here. I want a little bit of dark, a little bit of the highlight color. And just using the bristles of the of the Frank Clark brush just to kind of highlight a little bit here of the the trees with some cad yellow hue. Just pressing in that brush gives you some little tiny details that you know it'll look like you took hours to do. You let the brush do the work. There's a unique thing with watercolor too, and that's it really looks different once it's dried. Um, it's only by the process that you can eventually learn that what you're putting down isn't necessarily what you're going to get at the end. So you've got to kind of trust the process and know how things are going to dry. It's something can't really be taught. And you have to kind of experience it for yourself. Just dabbing in some darks here. Just to kind of accent them some things. Adding to the grasses down below. Again, a little spritz. It's almost as if I'm adding thicker paint 
but I'm adding the water after. So I'm kind of doing it on the paper rather than doing this mix. It's where you have to ask yourself, am I doing more harm than good by kind of playing around too much? And I'm just kind of dabbing a little this yellow. I don't want it to be so obvious, even though it'll probably be matted out. Just don't run a big blob of yellow pulling your eyes to the left over there. Now that this dried a little bit, just try to come in with some more darks. So dabbing in some darks. And I think, uh, I think the tree is coming in now. Just try to use the ends of the bristles to get some random things happening. And switch over to the fan brush. These are just like what I like to call little end details, just little minor things. And just taking a little of that cad yellow hue, hue and just dabbing in a few branches so that it looks like the light is catching. Again, just a little bit with the fan brush, just in between, a little dry brushing. Uh, there's not a, much moisture on the fan brush. So just a little, little dry brushing here and there. Dry brush can be very effective. And we'll go ahead and scratch in some little rocks leading up to the pathway here. And again, here I am coming in with some darker colors to accent between the rocks. Take the end of the card and just flick in a couple of sticks coming out. You know, you see a couple of rocks, there's always some weeds or some sticks or something trying to grow up through the middle. I'm gonna fill in this corner here where the clip was. Okay, so just going to come back in with the card, just to add just, just some light, more so than scratching rocks, it's more just kind of like texturing. You can find ways to make textures that can really, really help your painting. I'm not even putting a lot of pressure on here. This board that I'm painting on is a like a clip for papers on your desk. If I had to scrape hard, I would be pushing the thing back. So I'm not putting a lot of pressure on there. I'm just flicking in a few more little sticks and things. I hope you uh, you guys are doing good with your paintings, and uh, if you have any questions, obviously, you can put them in the comments section, and for those of you who want to follow me on the various social medias, and uh, you can follow me on, uh, you can go to my eBay shop. Easiest way for links are to just go to my site. I have joemenzaart.com and joemenza.com. Um, you can go to either one of those pages, take you to the same site, and I have links to everything there. 
And I have a gallery with a lot of the work I've done. You can see how I've progressed over the three years of time. You can go back and you can look at some of my earlier stuff. It's been an enjoyable ride so far. And hopefully continue for years to come. Just taking the brush. Dabbing in. Dabbing, dabbing. Just some little things sticking out. This will catch the light just right. So that's it for this one. And I'm just giving that spray over there just to randomize that tree a little bit. That's about the last thing I'm going to do. Let's uh, look closely at it. And we can see all the work went into it. And finally, in a frame. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.